Hi everybody and welcome back. Really appreciate having you here for joining me. I am going to do the potting up of my keikis that I harvested in the last video of uh, For the Love of Orchids. Let's make more. I have done one regarding divisions, one regarding seed pods. Now I am going to do one with my keikis that I harvested in the other video. If you haven't seen how I treated the Aphyllum keikis, I'm experimenting on a prototype of a mount that should remain inorganic yet functional and uh, replace EpiWeb. So that's the idea behind those, but I'll link it down below in the description. So this time I'm going to pot up my Bariota keikis and my Hibiki keikis. I still have more keikis coming from the mother plant, but I'm not going to sit around and wait for those to mature to harvest them. I'm going to take care of these straight away and the method I'm going to use will allow me to disturb them and add the other keikis as and when they mature. But at least I can get these out of permanent water and uh, get them situated. I'm going to start with the less sturdy ones. In my opinion, the hibiki aren't as sturdy as the bariota. And I'm going to put those into just plain ceramics. Keikis essentially are seedlings. So they need a moist environment and where their roots can grow. And they have to be just treated like a seedling. Considering that roots on keikis grow aerial, very, very rarely, nothing to do with a mermaid by the way, but aerial, as in growing above media or not on a trunk. The roots are not used to being inside of a media. Now for the past couple of days, they've been soaking as you saw or as I did in the video on this scouring pad and the roots have been permanently in contact with water. Now if that is not enough and I doubt to make them accustomed to being in a humid environment, the next step is to get them used to it in the media that you put it in. I don't use any organic media if I can help it. I am trying to get away from being dependent on the likes of sphagnum moss. So here I have ceramics and that's I'm going to use with the hibiki. And uh, because, because the roots are much, much smaller, finer, and the last time I did hibiki keikis, I just used leka. And it was a, a lot more work to keep that pot flushed and flushed and flushed. My next thing I could do is use leka, but filter out all the small pebbles to make it more water retentive. But now I have my ceramics. I'm not going to waste my time and sort out small pieces of leka. I'm just going to use ceramics. So while I was talking away, you saw that I tied a wire around the two, trying to keep them at similar height. That will be where they will sit on the media. And my little stake here will go around my support back there and hopefully keep them in place and sturdy. You can see that basically these are now their current size. They've gotten to full size. There is no more growth to come because they are growing their terminal leaf. So this one is just starting to split and this leaf right here is starting to come out. So these will not get any bigger for the remainder of the season until they start to produce their own basal growths beginning of next year and or, or depending when they are going to be mature enough and strong enough to do so. Their main focus right now is root production. And I want to encourage that. So I'm just going to fill up the base as high as possible. And I will show you how I treat my keikis and short rooted seedlings. Because this is a semi-hydro setup. 
Now you can see my reservoir is pretty high up because I don't want the water displacement from the media to take away from how much humidity and water I want in this pot. So I don't go the normal down to here margin, I just, I'm just generous about it. The roots, by the time they reach down there, will be absolutely adapted to a very humid environment, wet environment including, and then they can go wherever they want, but for the time being I need that wicking to do the maximum work. I'm already going to put my tag in because I don't want to be jiggling around too much. I have to be jiggling around when I secure the plant to the support. Now this is not tight around the little keikis. It's actually quite loose, but enough for it to either grow into or it's tight enough to just support them into position. I just use the pliers to give me that extra bend because if I try to bend it with my hand, I'm squashing them against the wire and I want to avoid that. Oh, I want to show you something. Look at this. That's cool. Right down here. That is the sign of a new growth already. So that's great. I've never seen that before. The other one doesn't have it. All that remains is to fill her up and see if she stays upright on her own accord. I'm not doing the squeezing, shaking, patting into place. These roots are not accustomed to what's going about to, what they're about to live with. So a little bit more diffused air around them is absolutely fine with me and I believe they are sturdy enough unless I can get away with one more turn without messing it up. You know sometimes you take a step and you think I should have just left it it was perfect but no we always try to think we can do it one more better in the hopes that nothing goes wrong in that attempt. There we go. That will work for me perfectly. And I'm cutting the end off because I don't want it to snag against something when I move them. There we go. Hibiki keikis. You're on your own now. Well, sort of. I'm going to fill up. This is um, 150 ppm of fertilizer. 75 calcium nitrate, 75 MSU. The pH is 6.3. Same procedure. Anybody else watch Dinner for One? I love Dinner for One, by the way. It's something I watch every year at 5 p.m. on New Year's Eve and 7 p.m. again. And if I still haven't had my fill, then again at 9 p.m. Dinner for one has been my ritual. And if I went to travel to a country, for example, that I know didn't have it, then I have a DVD and I took it with me. <laughs> it's a... Dinner for one, Miss Sophie and Mr. Pomeroy. Oh well, and the butler of course, but same procedure. I'm going to just wire them together. 
Now these roots did not get enough humidity, but I think I'll be okay in teasing them down into the media. Very odor roots are a little bit more tough and forgiving. And in this case, I am not going with ceramis because I don't want to rot these roots. I'm going with small lava rot. Also in a semi-hydro setup. I can flush and flush and flush in this method. I won't have any problems whatsoever, whether it be fresh water or fertilized. I can really go to town in this method. And that's why I like the little lava rock because if someone were to get my berry odor and they don't grow in my Lekka self-watering setup, then the bark and the small lava rock, both of them can be adapted towards each other. So it's easier if I give them a kind of an environment they might get accustomed to in future. I don't know. Maybe I'm just going to be growing these keikis on for myself. And all the other ones that are to come, I've seen two more on the mother plant. But back to lava rock and bark. Lava rock will dry out re relatively quickly. I can give this orchid a dry rest in the winter by letting the le reservoir completely dry out and not refill. And I can be just as aggressive with watering when she's in growth mode. Same reason, I can flush, flush, fill the reservoir, flush, flush, and then the roots can have the best of both worlds. These keikis will also have by now reached their full size. Because you can see the top leaves are wide open, there's nothing else growing out of the crown. It has now grown to its full potential based on these keikis. It doesn't mean that the plant is going to be this size. The plant will get much bigger once they grow their own new growths. But from a keiki point of view, I have nothing else to anticipate growth-wise. It may not even push out more roots. It may just be the way it is now until new growth start. And these roots are it for the foreseeable future. So I don't want to exactly go all ninja on them and kill them just because I've got two more keikis coming. I want these to make it. And we shall see when I harvest the other keikis and then add them to this pot. We'll see if the roots are doing well and if not, what, what adjustments need to be made. So, I could be fussing there for a little bit longer, but I won't. It's just one root being a little bit obnoxious. I can be obnoxious too. So there's that. Same water. And I can go to town here. I don't see a new growth at the base. The, the lava rock was completely dry. Even though some of the roots were not dry, I'm going completely to town on the water because I want to make sure that from here on in, they get used to something wet, moist, damp. Do we need to adjust a little bit? We'll just do one. One loop for security. There we go. And pretty much even though this is a pot, looks like a plant, there's four. Clearly, there's four in here. But we'll just grow them on like this for the time being and I will keep you updated and see how they go and when we harvest the other ones we'll take them out see their progress or if there isn't any assess what can be improved and from there on in we will pot up the next ones that come in and then just grow them on thank you everybody so much for watching really appreciate having you here there's some background noise but um they are probably more wondering what is going on behind the hedge. And I'm like going, can you please be quiet? <laughs> Never mind. Appreciate it. Have yourself a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.